Selamat pagi dan salam sejahtera bagi kita semua Bapak Ibu dan Saudara yang kami hormati Sebelum acara kita mulai Perkenalan kami untuk menyampaikan safety briefing Jika nanti eh, dalam keadaan darurat Atau keadaan yang tidak kita inginkan Terjadi apa-apa yang ada di dalam gedung ini Yang pertama saat ini kita berada di lantai 3 gedung PLA dan gedung ini memiliki dua pintu darurat yang pertama tadi di tengah ketika Bapak Ibu dan Saudara memasuki ruangan ini dan yang kedua berada di sisi kiri saya atau sebelah utara gedung ini jadi ada dua tangga sekiranya nanti ada keadaan darurat atau keadaan yang tidak kita inginkan seumpama ada gempa bumi dan sebagainya Anda silahkan untuk uh, melewati jalur evakuasi tersebut dan kami sarankan untuk segera lindungi kepala Anda dan carilah tempat pelindung yang aman sekiranya sudah keadaan sudah mereda atau lebih aman Anda silahkan untuk meninggalkan atau keluar dari gedung ini eh, dengan jalan cepat agar Anda tidak terjatuh kemudian jalur evakuasi yang ada dari lantai 3 ini menuju lantai 1 dan bertemu di titik kumpul yang berada di lantai 1 di depan gedung PLA yang tadi Bapak Ibu Saudara maksudnya Selamat pagi, nama saya Erwin Hermanto dari PT Mediteng Indonesia Sebelumnya saya mau banyak terima kasih kepada Ketua Panitia Panitia Acara, Kamu Kamu Terhormat, Dewan Fakultas terutama Cok Ikuan yang sudah memberikan saya kesempatan untuk untuk mensponsori acara ini dan uh, Robert, welcome to Indonesia again and more importantly, welcome to Yogyakarta yes. so I believe you're in good hands here <laughs> yes, thank you uh, dalam kesempatan ini, saya mau memberikan sedikit presentasi saja tentang produk unggulan kami yang berhubungan dengan recovery dan itu produknya adalah Ibrahim sedikit perkenalan saja karena memang uh, kami juga terbatas waktu uh, jadi mohon maaf kalau misalnya saya harus uh, mengobati beberapa slide game ready ini uh, sedikit perkenalan adalah alat full compression therapy Dan alat ini sudah uh, terbukti sangat efektif untuk cedera-cedera uh, jaringan lunak, cedera uh, akut dan kronik, contohnya strain, strain, full muscle, dan full ligament. Uh, dan sangat efektif untuk post-op rehabilitation, uh, terutama untuk ACL, uh, arthroscopy, dan sebagainya. Nah, untuk saat. Untuk saya menjelaskan lebih lanjut, mungkin ini sedikit refreshment saja. Saya yakin teman-teman juga su sudah cukup paham dengan proses ini. Uh, harus kembali lagi ke mekanisme dari satu cedera. Nah, ketika terjadi cedera pada jaringan lunak, uh, biasanya itu disertai oleh pendarahan, pendarahan ringan atau mungkin pendarahan yang cukup uh, banyak. Uh, dan uh, Selanjutnya itu dari uh, mungkin respons natural dari tubuh kami adalah terjadi pembengkakan atau edema yang dikenal dengan edema. Edema ini menimbulkan rasa nyeri dan juga akan memperlambat uh, recovery dari pasien tersebut. Nah, oleh karena itu uh, mungkin bapak-bapak juga su sudah cukup tahu dengan proses atau prosedur dari rice ini. Artinya, rest, ice compression, elevation yang biasanya selalu dilakukan pada injury akut ya. Nah, nah, rest ini gunanya untuk apa? Ya, ini untuk mencegah cedera lebih lanjut uh, untuk membuat proses penyembuhan luka juga lebih cepat. Uh, ice ini untuk mengurangi rasa nyeri dan rasa sakit, untuk mengurangi edema intinya. Dan compression kurang lebih sama, mengurangi pembengkakan dan mengurangi pendarahan dan juga membantu sirkulasi. Elevasi uh, untuk mengurangi edema juga dan juga mencegah terjadinya akumulasi efek-efek uh, cedera lanjut. Ya. Nah, 
Foam compression terapi ini sebenarnya menerapkan ice and compressionnya ini dan inilah game ready dan uh, dengan axel teknologinya. Mengapa game ready? Uh, game ready ini sudah terbukti dengan uh, benefit-benefit sebagai berikut: uh, mengurangi pembengkakan, mengurangi rasa sakit. Uh, sudah terbukti uh, dapat mengurangi ketergantungan terhadap obat bius atau uh, obat anti sakit, uh, terutama setelah uh, post op surgery ya. Uh, ini sangat penting karena uh, di Amerika ini banyak uh, terjadi memang uh, uh, abuse ya, di mana abuse dari uh, uh, narkotika dan sebagainya. Jadi dapat mengurangi uh, ketergantungan pasien terhadap obat-obat tersebut itu sangat membantu dan juga membantu recoverynya karena kalau memang obat-obat uh, seperti narkotika, narkotika dan sebagainya itu dapat terbukti memang memperlambat uh, dari proses recovery pasien tersebut. Nah, ini untuk klinikal study reference-nya juga tersedia di bus kami sebenarnya. Kalau misalnya tertarik, mungkin bisa dapat menampil dari Nah, untuk uh, kembali lagi, ketergantungan terhadap obat bius tersebut, ini sudah ada studinya, uh, di mana uh, dari 83 pasien dari uh, sampling point mereka itu, terbukti dari 83 persen itu, mereka dapat uh, berhenti, maksudnya berhenti discontinue narcotic use dalam 6 minggu nah, dan itu adalah satu angka yang cukup signifikan ini ada beberapa uh, testimoni-testimoni profesional dari misalnya Dr. Xavier Kasat dan uh, Peter Millet uh, yang sudah kembali lagi, mereka sudah membuktikan bahwa alat ini sangat membantu untuk mengurangi ketergantungan terhadap narkotika dan itu tidak kasar Nah, itu kelebihan-kelebihannya. Nah, ini mungkin ada beberapa protokol aplikasi yang di-share oleh GFRD-nya sendiri uh, untuk uh, lower extremity injury contohnya. Ini cukup lengkap, saya ada sekitar 30 protokol lebih dan ini mungkin saya skip saja karena memang cukup detail. Uh, kalau misalnya Anda tertarik dengan protokol-protokol ini, bisa ke saya, saya bisa share juga. Nah, mungkin untuk merekap saja, uh, karena mohon maaf, uh, waktu bus juga cukup terbatas, uh, mungkin saya tinggalkan dengan beberapa poin ini saja. Uh, kenapa game ready? Karena game ready merupakan teknologi yang sudah terbukti uh, oleh clinical clinical study tadi, uh, sangat tepat, efektif, dan bermanfaat uh, untuk recovery dari cedera akut dan kronik, uh, dan post rehabilitation. Uh, karena mengurangi ketergantungan terhadap uh, obat bius, uh, cara pemakaian yang cukup mudah, portable dan mudah dibawa, alatnya sangat kecil, uh, bisa dilihat display kami di luar, dan pilihan cup yang cukup lengkap untuk setiap anatomi uh, dari tubuh manusia, dan sangat ergonomis. Nah, uh, sejauh ini siapa yang sudah menggunakan game ready di Indonesia? Jadi tahun lalu uh, kami sempat uh, mensponsori atau uh, bahkan mungkin menjual juga ke beberapa PDPD di Indonesia yang uh, berhasil memenangkan medali-medali di Asian Games. Nah, ini salah satunya. Uh, dan untuk pemakai-pemakai internasional, merek ini sudah dipakai cukup banyak oleh ABL Atletik Internasional. Ya, salah satunya mungkin Lionel Messi yang di sini. Uh, dan untuk video tutorial dan sebagainya, ini tersedia di uh, website kami. Uh, untuk setiap uh, rapper itu ada tutorialnya dan untuk setiap protokol itu ada tutorialnya jadi sudah cukup lengkap dan ini tersedia untuk umum bisa dipelajari mungkin offline nanti uh, mungkin dari saya segitu saja sekali lagi terima kasih semoga sukses acaranya hari ini terima kasih oke, okay, today we will discuss about the recovery and fatigue management for the athlete and we already have uh, our speaker today, Professor Stephen Burke. And before uh, Professor Stephen Burke talk about uh, this topic, I will uh, read uh, his curriculum vitae first. Professor Stephen Burke, uh, he is a program director, strength and conditioning at University of Wollongong, mm -hmm. Australia, and senior advisor, high performance program and high performance sport, uh, 
uh, in Illawarra Hawks. And he get uh, his PhD in exercise physiology in Charles III University, Australia, and also a uh, bachelor of human movement at Charles III University, Australia also. A lot of publication and award, especially in strength conditioning, recovery, and nutrition topic. Okay, please welcome to Professor Stephen Bird to the stage and please give applause. Oh, okay. One more, one more. 
Oke, Mr. Gandor. So we're gonna do some plantar release. Yeah, so we do spiking ball, plantar release. Let's do a minute. Okay, okay, push, push hard, 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 hard. Because what you want to see now, we get plantar release, and then does that have an impact on hamstring flexibility? So ball athlete, pre-game, pre-game in warm-up, we'll do some like a release, yeah? Okay. Change over, other side. Yep. Push hard, push hard, push hard. Push hard, push hard, push hard. Got a little karate guy, yeah? <laughs> okay. Okay, so back on here. Same again. Now, do they go same or lower? Better, worse, same. Better. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah. So, something simple, very easy. We did plantar release, plantar release, hamstring flexibility, increase. Very easy to do. But we're talking about recovery. Recovery is what we want to look at today. So if our next stop for the street side is recovery, we need to look from an athlete perspective. Athlete, Larihan, yeah? Some fatigue. Then game or match, more fatigue, training again, cycle goes around. Okay, so what we need to do is add some recovery in the middle to allow them to have less fatigue. We are looking for symptoms and signs of overtraining, illness, and injury. So, what do we do for athletes? How do we improve recovery for athletes? So, we have our match. We need to look for inflammation. So, we have uh, game ready, yeah, cold compression therapy, and air relaxed compression therapy. We need to restore energy. And we need to cycle exceptional, make them feel better. We can look at trying to measure range of motion, so hamstring flexibility, calf flexibility, and we need to look at our two main areas, yeah? So sleep and dizzy. The literature will show us. Rest, sleep, nutrition, hydration. So a lot, what we do is around these areas. Adequate rest, adequate sleep, nutrition, hydration. Because all of these are linked together. Match, I need recovery. After the match, my nutrition, time and timing, hydration. Sleep for psychology recovery and the quantity of sleep. That will have an impact on my training, which will have an impact on match. So all links together.
So what we use for uh, 2017 games, we start the recovery checklist. So we have our recovery checklist, which gives us points. So the athlete, we want to achieve points for each recovery strategy. So we published this in publication 2011, where we looked at the implementation of recovery strategies across, across Team Indonesia for uh, leading up to Beijing Olympic. So here is our strategy. Okay, compression, contrast water, hydro, hydration, monitoring, massage, soft tissue, nutrition, and here are the recovery points. So if I use compression, I put in my bank 10 points. If I use contrast water, I put in my bank 5 points. So we want you to get as many points as you can for the athlete. So this is what we use for Beijing. Okay, compression, 10 points. Contrast, five. Uh, pool, 10. Hydration, five. Okay, we want to add this up to be 100 points uh, per week. Right, so we challenge the athlete to bank as many points as possible. We use the same for Rio for badminton. Okay, same program for Rio for badminton for recovery. This was what we used for Rio. Only difference now, one day, yeah, one day, target, 12 points. So 24 hour, one day, 12 points. So compression, contrast, pool, sleep, Leg drains, psychology, easy, hydrasy, soft tissue massage, comp uh, compression, cold therapy. So one day, 24 points. In practice, when we do this, so this is example from badminton. Yeah, so from badminton. We do our recovery strategies. This graph represents contact time in a jump. All right, so when I jump, how much time am I spending on the ground? Recovery every day. Game one, match one, match two, match three, match four. No change in contact time. So we were able to maintain the athlete's power across the duration of a competition. Because in a competition, what we usually see, what happens to peak power and force over multiple days in a competition? It usually goes down. But what we were able to do through recovery is maintain, maintain their force. So little fatigue. Must make it fun. So, in Rio, we used a lot of hydrotherapy. Okay, take the body weight, the buoyancy of the water, floating in the water, we would dump the players in there. And as you can see, they're all pretty happy, yeah? So we're using water therapy a lot. Okay, so same with, uh, get ready, air relax, leg drains, looking at some compression, looking at anti-gravity, and psychologists, clearing the mind. So, after training, post-training, yeah? Okay, so now, activity. What we would like you to do is now have a think about your athletes, your athlete. How many points would your, athlete, would your athlete bank how many points in, in one day?
Profesor Stephen yang ingin rekan-rekan yang ada di sini mencoba untuk menghitung poin. Uh, jadi selama mungkin Anda pernah jadi atlet atau jadi pelatih, apakah ada metode-metode yang uh, ada di depan sini Anda pernah terapkan? Misalnya Anda paling mudah hot itu ice bed nyemplung nyemplung ke rendaman es gitu ya misalnya misalnya maka kalau anda lakukan itu anda kasih poin tiga gitu, misalnya atau kemudian misalnya uh, tidur itu misalnya istirahat tidur itu maka tiga poin kemudian kaki diangkat tuh misalnya itu uh, satu poin dan sebagainya uh, coba untuk di poin atau di skor Uh, recovery yang sudah anda lakukan untuk atlet anda atau anda dalam satu hari itu kira-kira berapa poin kemudian yang kedua apakah anda bisa untuk mentargetkan 12 poin yang mampu laksana uh, dalam uh, praktek anda sebagai pelatih atau atlet sehari-hari jadi yang pertama anda coba hitung skor poin anda yang Anda lakukan selama ini, kemudian yang kedua Anda coba untuk bikin target 12 poin dari scoring yang ada di uh, depan itu yang mampu laksana kira-kira berapa? Uh, one minute, Prof. Oke, okay. one minute, satu menit coba Anda uh, setting. About the piano stretching that we are we usually use uh, daily practice. So uh, I asked the Professor Bert that uh, has the band mobility stretch has the same point. The three points uh, with the piano stretching or the perspective. And the answer is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Piano, piano stretching, yes, yeah, so we get the uh, two points, yeah? Uh, three points. Three points. Three points. Three points. So, then, yeah. Yeah, three points. Yeah. Um, for many athletes, um, they don't even realize that they need recovery and they are in practical conditions. So what happens if the knee athletes just tell the coach that, oh coach, two days ago, um, I didn't realize that I bumped or I, whatever, and during the competition, then it's more, uh, it's added to six percent. Um, when they tell us that um, two days after the injury happened, so it's like 40, uh, 48 hours. So, The, um, the, the points are still um, the use of recovery yeah. okay, So the question was if an athlete was injured and two days prior, what happens with the points? So we would like our athletes every day to try and achieve 12 points. All right? Every day we ask them to try and achieve 12 points. We must monitor them to know if they, are, if they have an injury. Okay, so the idea is for my athletes, what I will talk about tomorrow will be how we monitor daily what they are telling us. But every day we would ask them to try and achieve 12 points. If they have an injury, they should be more proactive in trying to do their recovery. Yeah, so same every day, 12 points, even if they have an injury. Right, Jerry. Uh, atlet disarankan untuk setiap hari mencapai poin 12 tadi uh, kemudian bagaimana kalau cedera kalau cedera justru atlet harus lebih proaktif untuk melakukan uh, recovery recovery ini uh, supaya tetap tercapai dan dilakukan seoptimal mungkin untuk uh, dapat 12 poin so our monitoring system is we have an online online computer system every morning 7 a.m In the morning, the athlete receives email and they fill out injury, soreness, fatigue, and as soon as they press send, it goes to the coach. Coach can look over and then either I need to follow up with athlete or is athlete okay. So our monitoring system is online and we use a program called Team App. It's free. It's free, online, yeah. Team App. Jadi Anda bisa menggunakan uh, sistem online tim app, tim tim apps, tim app yang itu secara online uh, dapat uh, memberikan uh, program recovery secara online. Jadi kalau Profesor Stephen uh, biasanya pukul 7 pagi uh, 
uh, akan mendapat email dan kemudian profesor akan membalasnya. Jadi sudah secara online Anda bisa coba di tim app kan? dan itu free. Oke, okay. uh, sebenarnya Profesor Stephen akan bicara soal teknologi tim app pada conference besok. Jadi uh, mungkin akan disambung lagi soal teknologi dan tim app untuk uh, conference besok. Oke, okay. so move on now. Soft tissue. What do we do for muscular and soft tissue injury? So we can see. Get ready, massage, trigger roll. So you can see here, GP, uh, so Garcia Poli, uh, Indonesia Open last year with, with her role pre-game as a trigger. So rolling pre-game as a trigger. Our latest research on rolling, we have shown that we can increase, increase jump height for up to 72 hours with rolling. So they're producing more force and their pain levels Okay, their pain levels, their tolerance for pain is also better. So they jump higher and they don't feel as much pain with rolling. So we can use this, okay, so whether it be the Viper Ball. Okay, so it's massage moves. Okay, so we use the, the massage Viper Ball or we use the same with The same thing, but vibrate, yeah? So vibrate ball, vibrate roller, and we get increases in jump height. So that's what uh, Gracia is using, the roller, vibrating roller, yeah? So just so IT, 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 hamstring, half, quadricep, around lower body. Okay. Oke. Okay. Uh, butuh dua volunteer lagi. Boleh? Siapa maju? Dua orang. Please. Please, please, please. Oke. Okay. Okay. So grab the ball. Grab the grab the ball and grab the ball. Roll Okay, so when we roll, we can do uh, satu minute. Okay, satu minute, satu minute, satu minute. So take a minute. Side. And we will do this pre-game, pre-training, pre-match as part of movement preparation. Yeah, warm up, movement preparation. And some athletes like to do this after the game, okay, post game as well.
Apakah ada rekan-rekan di sini yang pernah melakukan foam roll seperti ini? Sudah? Oke. Okay. Alatnya enggak kita. Oke. Okay. No no hybrid. No hybrid. So you know when you roll, you'll find a hot spot or trigger the trigger area. With the vibration, the vibration, because the muscle is tight, right? That's why we find the hot spot. The vibration actually tells the nervous system to turn down the amount of tone to the muscle. Okay, so after 10, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, it's not so intense. Right? Not so intense. Uh, is there a big difference between the manual uh, manual foam rolls and the vibrating uh, foam rolls? So the question is, there's a difference between like, just a normal foam roller um, and vibrating roller? Definitely because we don't have what we call the perturbation, like that's, that little jackhammering of the vibration, right? that jackhammering of the vibration is what tells your brain to turn down the tone of the muscle. All right, so it actually, the vibration starts to tell your brain to tell the muscle to relax. Therefore, you can get a deeper penetration and therefore the relaxation after that is, is much greater. So, but it depends on your environment. When we were in East Kalamata, we just found uh, some plastic pipe. We just cut it up and we just used that with the athletes. It depends on what you, you know. So, best, best scenario, Vibration, any scenario, at least roll on a bottle, pipe, whatever you have. Yeah. Okay. Uh, boleh, mungkin diceritakan, uh, <laughs> mas, uh, bagaimana mungkin uh, ketika merasakan atau me, apa melatihkan itu apa namanya ya, yang dirasakan So dynamic compression, same as uh, our uh, game ready. Okay. So I only need uh, just a satu. Satu orang lagi. Okay, this one is there. As you can see, we have the uh, oh, yeah. same. Okay, same sitting on the bed. Uh, Olympic camp in South Pole. Okay, some compression therapy going on. So we're going to look at compression moves for 10 minutes. And what we do is with our athletes, we'll get the athletes to do a squat or a lunge to feel how much muscle soreness. Then they would 10 minutes uh, minimum in compression, and then we'll get them to tell us again how much soreness they have. All right? What's well, easy one to do? Uh, apa faktor-faktor lain yang mungkin berpengaruh terhadap uh, hidrasi atau pemenuhan kecairan atau mungkin dehidrasi jadi what other factors affect hydration jadi kira-kira uh, apa sih faktor-faktor lain uh, tadi salah satunya adalah activity type ya kailan, uh, karena berolahraga mungkin karena berkeringat kemudian uh, cairan tubuh hilang kemudian what other factor affect hydration jadi apa sih faktor lain selain activity type uh, yang mempengaruhi terhadap hidrasi mungkin ada yang coba untuk menjawab oke ada lagi uh, atlet wanita ya uh, yang mengalami menstruasi ada lagi kira-kira apa Stress in the static position. Stress in the static position. So if you know, uh, uh, you are waiting for <coughs> your your turn in competition that you are waiting so hard, 
that you are stressing, yeah, yeah. and it will be dehydrated so much. Oh, okay. okay. So, so stress, yeah. Yes. So, like, so stress. Waiting. Ada lagi? Okay. The, the tasting and the temperature of the beverage. Temperature of the beverage. And let's just let's just go with the temperature. So climate. How hot? How hot it is? When they're traveling, catching a train, a flight, taxi, hotel. What are they not doing? Okay. Very very bad. Okay, with that. So travel is a big one, especially flying. Yeah. So the pressure is supposed to be flying and get dehydrated. So we will always for our athletes. Our athletes will take their container on the on the plane, and they will also take a, a hydration tablet, which is in their drink. So they take that all the time. Okay, nutrition supplementation. Yeah. So post training. We always have a variety of foods. Okay, everyone has different likes, so we'll have different foods for our athletes in relation to uh, post training. This was uh, volleyball, beach volleyball. Uh, the uh, qualifiers in Cairns for Team Indonesia. So you may see here. So we had four athlete hydration satchel. Okay, so we had four athletes who were dehydrated, so they get. A hydration satchel, okay, some uh, uh, banana, and then their shake straight after training. Yeah, so if those athletes would be, had hydration problems, they would get hydration satchel. Okay, so when we look at muscle damage, nutrition supplementation, amino acid specifically will help us build the muscle wall. So if your athlete is involved in any training where they have muscle damage. Amino acids would be a good supplement to choose. Okay, so recovery nutrition. You need to think about what would be three gives you hydration and, and strategy that you could use for your athletes. Okay, if your athlete is a cyclist, or your athlete is a track runner, or if they're a weightlifter, what type of recovery nutrition would be benefit for your athlete. Okay, so we need to think about what could work in your context of your sport. All right. So for NBA player, 82 game season, sleep as much as they possibly can to help get back to 100% as soon as possible. So sleep is very important. Doesn't matter. So what your sport is. Doesn't matter what your sport is, it will be affected by sleep loss. Okay, guarantee. When we talk about sleep deprivation and sleep loss, we talk about less than six hours, less than six hours each night. That will affect your performance. What does it do? If I get less than six hours sleep, my jump peak power is down by six percent. My cognitive function, my ability to react to a task on the board, is is down by eight percent. So if you if an athlete is sleeping less than six hours, we're going to have performance problem. So how much sleep should you have? All right, we're talking between this seven to nine hours as minimum for athlete. Right. We need to be seven to nine hours for athlete to get fully charged. Anything less than that, six hours down here. All right, seven to nine hours up here. What about injuries based on our sleep? Okay, so if I'm looking, you know, Lima, our sleep. Injury status is high compared to eight or nine hours sleep. Reduce injury rates in, in athletes, okay, especially youth children athletes. So I send a tweet. I go to bed. Am I going to go to sleep? Now I'm going to wait until I. Oh, well, I've got five likes, ten likes. All right, that's what I want to look at. So this is a big problem for athletes. 
because they live in a world of social media. If NBA players, they looked at them staying up on the night tweeting, home games and away games. When they tweet, okay, their shooting percentage is down. They score less points, less rebounds. And this is worse during away games. So the acute sleep deprivation through staying up in social media reduces your performance. Okay? So we need to look at how we can overcome that. What did Texas Tech basketball team do for March Madness? They had lost three games in a row. And their captain went to the coach and went, when we're on the road, we have the next six games away. So he went with the basket, went around the hotel rooms and made the players give them their phones. So no phones on the night. Remove the clock. Don't have a big meal before you go to bed. Okay, your bedrooms for sleep, not for working on the computer or being on your phone. All right. Cooler temperature, 18 to 20 degrees. If you go through these strategies, you will create an environment that is good for sleep. So you might need an eye mask, a bed lamp, blackout curtains, some noise by a fan, remove the alarm clock, get rid of it. If you're like me, what happens when you what happens when you wake up in the night and you say you go to the bathroom or you wake up? What's the first thing you do usually when you wake up in the night? What do you look at? Clock. So you look at the clock. And if you're like me, my brain starts going, okay, it's now 3 a.m. If I go back to sleep now, I can get another three hours sleep before I have to. So I start doing math. Does that, does that wake me up more and make me more alert if I start doing math? Yeah. So we talk about conscious, being conscious. So I wake up, I, know I need to go to the bathroom, I walk into the bathroom, I go back to bed, but I'm not alert. As soon as I start doing things that make me alert, by doing math, turning on the light, looking at my phone, all of a sudden now, all of the neurons in my brain start firing. So now it's going to take me longer to go back to sleep. So what we do is make sure we have an environment that is designed for sleep. Okay, psychologically, what do we do? So we need to look at this area called mindfulness. All right, mindfulness is very important for an athlete because we want the athlete to be in a calm state. You said earlier about being stressed. This guy, yeah. So you said earlier about being stressed prior to competition. Okay. So we want our athletes to be calm. So how can we keep our athletes calm? So we use mindfulness technique called future self. So in this one, all of the athletes came okay, doing some leg trains, which is good, but we're really working on what's happening inside their mind. Future self, future self. How do you see yourself when you arrive at the venue? How do you see yourself walking on court for the first time? How do you see yourself when things in the game and the match are not going good? And we use this with these guys for the Olympics. How do you see yourself serving, serving for the gold medal? And in one example, they were playing uh, Malaysia, and you can tell the Malaysian athlete was really, really nervous when they were serving for match point. And what did they do? It's a net, change of service, doing three points in a row, and then win the match. So, future self, how can you look at what you see is going to happen in the future? So we talk about flow state. Having a mind where things just flow. Alright? A visual gaze I'm engaging, I'm looking out and I'm concentrating on what's going to occur. Because I want this blue mind state. But what keeps coming into my mind if I have not prepared well? What am I thinking? I get all these funny little thoughts that pop into my head. 
is that not prepared, too slow, I haven't done enough work, what do I need to do? Okay, so we need to get rid of that, we need to anchor here and now. So we use a, a concept called anchoring. So anchoring is thinking about right now. So for us to anchor, we get the athlete to close their eyes, we take two deep breaths, they tap their toes, they open their eyes, and they're right here, right now. I'm not thinking about what's happening in the, in the next play, I'm not thinking about what happened in the last play, I'm right here. Because what can I change about what happened in the last play? Can't change that. Right. The next play hasn't happened yet, so I need to be present right now. So, if you look at the problems again, they talk about mind control. All right. and we use mind control a lot. Okay. So, Tony and, and Liliana, we had them using mind control at the stadium, thinking about what they were going to do. All right. Staying in that, that current state. We did cold water immersion. All right, cold water immersion, same. We had these guys thinking about future self while we're doing some cold water immersion. Anchor them, anchor the athlete to here and now. Okay, psychologically, we want to anchor the athlete here and now. All right, so we would have the athlete close their eyes, take a deep breath, open their eyes and gaze, and tap their toes to bring them back to right now. Okay, bring them back to right now. Very important. And that will help with if you have an athlete who's feeling stressed, who is anxious, okay, this will help bring them back to here and now. Psychologically very, very important. Okay, so our take-home points, recovery, our big rocks, we have talked about a lot in relation to recovery. But what I really want you to take away and start thinking about with your athletes are the big rocks. We call this the 90-10. All right, the 90-10, most important. If you get your athletes doing this 90%, so I'm looking at sleep, I'm looking at nutrition, I'm looking at hydration, those 90% things will assist the athlete psychologically, to feel like I'm ready to go, I'm good to perform. The 10%, the 10% is everything else. All right, so the 10% is all the other things that we do. Okay, so all of these things make up the 10%, but it's the big rocks, which are the 90% things, which will affect the psychology of the athlete the most. So what you take away from today is, am I doing everything with my athlete to target these? All of this, 10% is a bonus. When I do that, what happens? This is player wellness index. Okay, a percentage. Okay, so we ask the athlete how much soreness, fatigue, motivation, and we work out a percentage. Our, our target percentage is 60%. If we go back to our recovery point system, okay, so in this example with basketball, 48 hours, two, two days, we want them to achieve 30 points. So if my athlete achieves 30 points, they will be at 60% wellness. So for an athlete, our threshold, our cutoff point is 60%. So we know that we can get them to be a wellness index of 60, so they're ready to go. And to do that, for this basketball team, they had to receive 15 points in one day, not 12. 15 points for these guys. All right, so what we'll finish up with, I just want to thank, obviously, the, the faculty, okay, obviously, the presenter, and, uh, and the committee for allowing me to come and talk to you today. I'll be here. This, afternoon so I can talk about team app I haven't talked to you about other things no problem at all but if uh, if anyone has any questions we can we can open up for some questions yeah
Okay, thank you. Uh, give applause for the My name is Nandika from the uh, National Cycling uh, Team. And then uh, I want to ask about, because some, sometimes we have a race, like maybe a track race, especially that the athletes or the riders has to do race more than maybe two or three races in one day because they have to participate in more than one number. So sometimes they only have like maybe less than one hour to recover between the race, especially the spring one, the explosive one. variety 
your strategies. You as the expert and the coach, you need to work out of those strategies what is most relevant for your next performance. Is it energy? Okay. Is it hydration? Is it reducing soreness? Is it perceptual mind? Once you've finished the first race, what do you think is the most important thing they need to recover for the next race? All right, so that's the first thing I would do. And then the second thing would be, of the strategies, what's most practical at that time for you to do? So when we had, for example, we had uh, downhill world championships for, uh, in Cairns a couple of years ago, when Team Indonesia was there, we had to look at what was most practical that we could do there and then. Okay, so in most instances, it was some manual physical therapy with soft tissue. All right, we had, we had a therapist there, so we could do some manipulation, we could do some, um, some activation. Um, and the second thing we were able to do that was easy was some pre-cooling with the body. All right, so ice packs, like in Cairns, you talk about the tropics. Okay, it was a really hot day when I was running. So ice towels around the neck, around the armpits, perception of feeling cool. All right, they felt cool, ah, that feels better. So we released, released their tight muscles with manual therapy and we provide an opportunity for them to cool down. So in that environment, practically, we were able to do that. So I think on what's the most important thing you need to improve for the next race and what's practical for you to do. And here, here's a variety of things. You can choose which ones work best for your environment. Uh, somehow they think that by relaxing the muscles will make the muscles weaker. Is that true or, 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 or what's your opinion about that? Sure. Okay, so manipulation and therapy, we have shown through research, through my laboratory and other laboratories, I can get what they call a potentiation effect. Alright, an add-on effect for peak, for peak power. Alright, so we know with power sports, there's a level of muscle stiffness that we need to produce force. So if I have a piece of wood and I drop it on the floor, it's going to hit the floor and bounce back up. If I have a piece of rope and drop it on the floor, it's just going to, going to crumble. So I can't absorb and produce force. We know that when we talk about massage or therapy, we're not talking about whole body relaxing massage. We're talking about triggering certain points to try and get a slight release in tension to potentially maybe get an increase in range of motion. The second thing is, we try we trial all this, not at the competition, all right? So the competition is not the time to be playing with different strategies, right? Because you have one goal of the competition, which is to, to what? To win. So we will try this in practice, and the number one training principle that we all that we all go by, the number one training principle, is individualization. Okay, so we need to find of these strategies what works best for athlete A, for athlete B, for athlete C. They will have different different strategies they feel work best for them. One of the things when we designed the recovery process, we wanted to reward athletes for being more proactive. Okay, so if you were doing a strategy that required the athlete to go somewhere, to partake in something, we actually rewarded them with generally one more point for being proactive with the strategy. So for example, okay, they have to go and hop in an ice bath, or they have to go have a swim, all right? So they would get, they're actively engaging in something. Because nutrition and hydration is for us, is really something they should be doing anyway. All right, so they don't really have to do much more effort. When we have our post-recovery nutrition stations for the athlete, as the, as the performance physiologist, we set that up for them. So the athlete just has to finish training, come over, here it is, and they have the, they have the product. But if they need to engage in something like, they need to engage in stretching, they need to engage, be more proactive, they will generally get one more point because they actually have to go and do something. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean that the points is all related to the rewarding the athlete? So 
what on the, the efficacy of the strategy and how um, beneficial it is. So these, these ones here, we know that ice baths can be good for inflammation, but also the athlete has to be proactive and go and do it. So we implemented it, the program at the Western Region Academy of Sport, which is a pre-elite youth program for children. And we went with similar points, so slightly more, so the same 10, 15, 5 for our youth athletes because it was an education, an education program. Then that's still 100 points per week. And I can show you. Okay, so this one here is for the youth athletes. This is directly out of the youth athlete program. All right, where they would put in what strategy they use today, how many points, 10 points, five points, this is their daily points. And then the athlete would get this color-coded chart sent to them. So today, this athlete, 105 points for the week. Okay, recovery is good, and we would send that to the, to the youth athlete. So we would show them. For professional athletes, we have a leaderboard. All right, and every athlete, where do they want their name to be on the leaderboard? They want their name to be number one, right? So it creates a competitive environment to see whether they can accrue and, and obtain more points in the bank. So for riset hasil riset, kemudian tadi rekomendasi bagaimana kalau kasusnya adalah olahraga atau aktivitas dengan durasi yang tinggi dan hanya punya waktu satu jam lah kira-kira atau hanya waktu sebentar untuk recover. Uh, tadi Profesor Stephen sudah katakan bahwasanya pilih dari list yang ada di recovery point tadi pilih yang paling praktikal dan yang paling sesuai kebutuhan dengan uh, yang yang anda perlukan. Misalnya apakah anda butuh misalnya odor kemudian panas apakah anda lebih perlu pre-cooling mesti uh, hidrasi atau menurunkan suhu tubuh misalnya atau muscle tightness misalnya menurunkan ketegangan atau dengan massage dan sebagainya jadi pilih dari uh, metode yang ada di situ pilih yang paling mampu laksana dan paling sesuai dengan kebutuhan kemudian uh, tadi dokter Rika uh, menanyakan juga ada beberapa uh, misalnya kepercayaan ya maksudnya itu uh, ada beberapa myth gitu yang mengatakan Uh, atlet itu nggak mau di mungkin di stretch atau di massage karena takutnya kalau di massage di pijat kemudian malah lemes gitu malah lemes dan kemudian malah tidak bisa uh, perform optimal. Tadi Profesor Stephen sudah menjawab bahwasanya kita kalau ngomongin soal massage kan bukan whole body massage gitu tetapi hanya merilis beberapa tightness atau ketegangan otot sehingga uh, mungkin metodenya berbeda sehingga uh, apa namanya? Hal tersebut mungkin tidak perlu terlalu dikhawatirkan. Dan kemudian uh, tadi yang Profesor Stephen katakan itu harus dicobakan ketika training atau latihan. Jangan mencoba-coba hal baru ketika kompetisi. Gitu. Jadi dilihat ketika latihan, ketika harian dilihat apakah kalau kemudian anda berikan metode-metode metode tersebut kemudian uh, bisa bekerja dengan baik. Kemudian anda bisa trial lagi. Tapi jangan dicobakan atau mengubah sesuatu ketika turnamen. Kemudian tadi uh, pertanyaan dari Mbak Citra uh, soal poin ya piramid kemudian poin hydration status ini uh, Profesor uh, Stephen katakan bahwasanya uh, bahwasanya poin-poin ini juga ada bagian edukasi di situ makanya poinnya lebih tinggi pada beberapa hal misalnya uh, nutrisi dan hidrasi itu kok poinnya dua sementara ice bed itu tiga. Nah, Tadi dikatakan bahwasanya oke okay, hidrasi nutrisi itu kan hal-hal yang memang sudah harus kita lakukan mungkin sebagai pelatih keseharian juga sudah memberikan hidrasi dan nutrisi. Sementara poin-poin lain ini mendorong uh, atlet untuk lebih proaktif uh, yang kaitannya nanti uh, dengan pertanyaan selanjutnya bagaimana recovery pada atlet-atlet muda atau yang atlet. Tadi sudah dikatakan juga bahwasanya poinnya mirip. Jadi similar point antara yang atlet dengan atlet profesional dan tadi ditunjukkan bahwasannya pada atlet uh, junior justru ada unsur edukasinya 
sehingga mendorong mereka untuk tahu, untuk melakukan recovery, sadar untuk recovery, kemudian mau melakukan recovery dan tahu manfaatnya, bahkan ada visual visualnya, ada bentuk visualnya, mungkin juga ditaruh skor itu hari ini bagus, sangat bagus sehingga ada semacam uh, edukasi dan tantangan untuk anak-anak itu untuk bisa uh, recovery, sadar diri untuk melakukan recovery. Saya akan pakai bahasa Indonesia supaya lebih gampang dalam melakukan pertanyaan. Uh, yang pertama adalah tadi mengenai checklist uh, recovery. Apakah untuk mencapai target 12 poin itu uh, bisa secara acak atau memang ada dasar-dasar yang memang itu harus? Walaupun yang lainnya nanti menjadi pilihan. Saya misalkan, misalnya aja, misalnya. Sudah melakukan hal-hal hal hal semua, bahkan poin yang 15, tapi dia semalam nggak tidur. Nah itu gimana kira-kira? Kalau hanya melihat point of recovery, lebih dia. Bisa 20, tapi semalam melayak-layak, atau mungkin 3 malam nggak tidur, karena punya penyakit tiptonia, apalah, apalah. Mungkin lagi putus sama pacarnya, atau gimana. Gitu? Nah itu kira-kira gimana? Itu yang pertama. Terus yang kedua, nah, maaf saya juga dari perbasi, dokter Ikhwan. Uh, quarter 2 dan quarter 3 itu kan hanya 15 menit Tadi udah dimisalkan dari balap sepeda Hanya satu jam ya mas ya Nah itu satu jam Apa ya mas saya mau menanyakan 15 menit ini Kira-kira dari 15 menit itu recovery Ada gak recovery praktis yang bisa dilakukan oleh uh, pelatih fisik Saya dengar-dengar sih belum juga Prof. Bird itu sekarang pelatih fisiknya basket nasional gitu Mungkin, nanti mungkin bisa ditanyakan Nah, itu kira-kira 15 menit itu apa yang bisa dilakukan? Apakah ada pelakuan-pelakuan simpel yang bisa dilakukan untuk sedikit menambah uh, recovery dari atlet yang mau tanding di kuartal ketiga dan kuartal empatnya? Terima kasih. Selamat siang. So, any heavy training, any time we have an, an increase in training volume, this is where you as a sports physiologist would then go, okay, in this period I have an increase in training volume, I may take 12 points up to 15 points as my new target. It will depend, <coughs> depend upon the sport and the training phase. All right, so as a general, general, we would use 12 points across all sports, all right? But we said that the number one most important training principle is individualization. So you would apply this and adapt, adapt the points to your particular sport. And I showed an example at the end there with, with basketball. So with professional basketball, we did, we did not use 12 points. For professional basketball, we used 15 points. All right, so it depends upon the context of your sport. If you're comparing a sprinter to a marathon runner, if I'm working with a sprinter, Delayed onset muscle soreness may not be very important, but for a marathon runner, they may show more signs of DOMS. So my strategies that I choose will target, as I mentioned with your question, will target the specific area you really want to improve on for the next training day or for the next competition. So if I'm working with a marathon runner, I will work on strategies that promote more lactate clearance, that try and inhibit more DOMS, and also provide more nutritional recovery. So if I'm working with a marathon runner, I would look at strategies for that. If I'm working with a sprinter, I'm working on strategies for potentiation, for trying to improve power output. Okay, they will have a different focus as to my marathon runner. So, the recovery point system is dependent upon the, what your sport is and what's the, the main focus for your recovery for the next training or for the next competition. The value of sleep, the number one thing that we see across all, all athletes is sleep deprivation, all right, all athletes. So our sleep hygiene and our sleep education is for, for all athletes. My power athletes, they, they
they may only need a 20 minute nap as part of their recovery. For my marathon runners, and I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy for my sprinters, seven to nine hours of sleep in one day. For my marathon runner, I might, I might even use a sleep extension protocol for my marathon runner, where I want my marathon runner to achieve 10 hours of sleep per day. So they might only have seven hours of sleep at night, but they need to make up three hours of sleep during the day. So it's very individual whether I use a sleep extension program or whether I use a napping program. For my sprinter, I might use napping. For my marathon runner, I might use sleep extension. Calf muscle, flush rub. Okay, flush rub for three minutes for calves. Players will use a five minute cycle on the relax, the compression, and we use active recovery on the bike. All right, so we'll use three, three modalities in the change room at half time. And that whole, that whole section takes us in total around nine, nine minutes. All right, so we get a quick nine minutes. So if you do three minute car flush, all right, five minutes maximum compression, and then whatever time they feel they want on the bike. So we use that at half time. In Australia, for our environment, we have some athletes. Uh, one athlete, David Anderson, four time boomer, played for Houston Rockets. Uh, sweat a lot. So he has um, trouble with firmer regulation. So our half time strategy for him is hand cooling in the ice bucket, ice towel, and ice block. So he'll do some, some cooling for him to try and help cool him down. He, he's always saying he feels warm and good to go, but he, thermoregulation is a problem, so we do cooling with him. Some athletes will have different individual protocols, but as a, a general, most athletes will do compression, car flush, uh, and bike. Ketika Anda menerapkan poin, 12 poin untuk harian dan 100 poin uh, mingguan untuk recovery tetap uh, berpegang pada prinsip dasar program latihan yaitu individualisasi sehingga Anda bisa tahu bahwasanya ketika individualisasi itu diterapkan Anda tahu uh, ada beberapa cabang yang mungkin 12 cukup tapi tadi Prof. Ber katakan misalnya basket dia terapkan sehari itu 15 gitu jadi ada individualisasinya tergantung dari situasi, kemudian ada program latihan, volume latihan, kemudian ada terapkan dan diadaptasi ke masing-masing cabang olahraga. Misalnya cabang maraton, cabang maraton tentu saja poin yang dibutuhkan adalah merecover atau mengembalikan segera mengembalikan laktat lirus atau bersihan laktat misalnya atau mengira, segera melakukan bersihan laktat ataupun menurunkan dose delay onset muscle soreness jadi nyeri pada otot akibat uh, latihan yang tinggi tentu saja pada kasus tersebut beliau akan fokusnya misalnya lebih ke nutrisi dan sebagainya untuk sprinter misalnya dia fokusnya karena power output ya jadi output powernya yang uh, dilatihkan dan mungkin menjadi fokus maka Uh, nanti akan dipilihkan lagi cari uh, diadaptasi mana recovery point yang uh, cocok kemudian value of sleep uh, hampir semua atlet itu men mungkin mengalami gangguan tidur sehingga perlu diberikan edukasi dan higienitas ketika istirahat atau tidur jadi atlet itu perlu uh, sangat perlu untuk istirahat dan tidur dan ditanamkan soal kebersihan ketika istirahat, kemudian edukasinya dan sebagainya supaya bisa istirahat dengan nyaman dan tentu saja tadi tetap ada individualisasi misalnya pada maraton sama dan sprinter sama-sama mungkin tidur malamnya 7 jam gitu, 7 jam tapi uh, beliau katakan kalau maraton mungkin dia butuh 10 jam sehingga pada siang harinya dia akan merekomendasikan tidur tambahan 3 jam sementara untuk sprinter karena kebutuhannya lebih ringan untuk siap dia hanya Uh, tidur sebentar gitu 20 menit 30 menit itu cukup jadi kembali lagi ke individualisasi kemudian uh, bagaimana uh, fast recovery untuk basket uh, yang cuma 15 menit secara umum tadi dikatakan bahwasanya uh, beliau akan menggunakan compression garment 
kemudian untuk meringankan uh, apa namanya ekstremitas bawah yang berat gitu ya dia akan uh, memasak uh, betis gitu jadi uh, fals uh, fast uh, rubs gitu ya uh, dengan cepat kemudian uh, ada aktif recovery menggunakan stationary bike stationary speed stationary pak kira-kira lima menit lima menit lima menit seperti itu jadi Uh, compression 5 menit, kemudian uh, masa betisnya 5 menit, kemudian active recovery dengan baiknya 5 menit lagi kemudian pada beberapa kasus juga akan berbeda misalnya di Australia ada negara bagian yang sangat panas maka fokusnya ketika recovery akan ke thermal regulation atau menurunkan suhu uh, hand cooling, tangannya dicemplungkan ke bak dingin gitu ya kemudian handuk dingin, kemudian mungkin minumannya agak sejuk dan sebagainya jadi fokus recovery-nya akan sangat bergantung dari situasi yang terjadi kemudian bagaimana tadi kalau poinnya full tapi sebenarnya mana sih yang harus gitu ya Bapak Pak Andi ya misalnya poinnya itu 12 sudah tercapai 12 bahkan 15 tapi dia itu tidak recovery tidak bisa tidur gitu kan padahal sleep itu ada recovery-nya jadi dia poinnya penuh tapi nggak tidur insomnia apakah ada poin-poin yang wajib dipilih atau semua itu random konsepnya tadi dikatakan adalah recovery itu mengatasi masalah Bapak jadi ketika ada masalah dasar yang masih terjadi dengan recovery misalnya tadi gangguan tidur ya walaupun poinnya udah 12 tetap harus dikonsulkan supaya tidur itu tidurnya atlet juga jadi bagus gitu jadi konsep recovery adalah mengatasi masalah sehingga kalau masih ada masalah yang terkait dengan performa berarti recovery-nya ada yang belum betul gitu kemudian Uh, terakhir penelitiannya di mana saja uh, dalam melakukan recovery point tadi sudah disebutkan banyak sekali rugby, atletik, basket, swim, water polo dan sebagainya uh, jadi sudah cukup multi cabang olahraga baik uh, karena keterbatasan waktu termin terakhir hanya satu pertanyaan last question uh, for one person ada yang mau bertanya lagi Spesialis recovery-nya seperti apa? Kemudian nutrisinya bagaimana? Karena untuk misalnya buat apa? Uh, untuk binaraga itu kan di, di secara umum itu diketahui bahwa memerlukan banyak daging, banyak telur itu apa benar fungsinya untuk apa kemudian vitaminnya bagaimana terus istirahat tidurnya bagaimana cukup looking at strength athlete we know that the muscle damage is a part of what happens to the strength athlete so what we do in order to help with muscle damage Nutrition and supplementation, one of the first ones that we, that we look at. From a supplementation point of view, we already mentioned creatine. We have also used uh, beta alanine as, as a supplement, creatine as a supplement. And we will take those pre, pre-training, before training session. For recovery, we will look at two, two particular things. One is just either a whey or casein protein blend along with collagen ingestion so some collagen as well so there, there's four supplements we would use with a lot of our strength based athletes alright, so creatine, beta alanine, a protein blend okay, whey casein blend and collagen we know specifically with collagen we have improvements in tendon health with collagen ingestion Okay, so we know that um, the tendon health itself, and we have some strength athletes that have problems with tendons, with elbow and knees, and we get improvements in um, pain-free symptoms with our lifters through having collagen. So there's four supplements that you can look at straight away. Uh, physically, what sort of things do they use that will make them just feel, feel better? So for a lot of our strength athletes, they actually, uh, they like heat. So we do a lot of heat work with the, with the athletes pre-lifting, so they will do some passive heat maintenance prior to, to lifting, so they like the feeling of being warm. So we will use just reflective blanket, you know, like silver, silver blankets with an accident. So we use that, and we use infrared light is the other two. So we use a blanket, uh, the reflective
reflective nature and the use infrared light. The athletes like the feeling of warmth as far as that goes. Uh, sleep, sleep for a strength athlete depends on, on, on the work they're doing. As a norm, seven to nine hours per night um, is what we would recommend across most of the athletes that we deal with. If they have sleep problems, sleep issues, we would try and get them to have nine or ten with some sleep top up. Sleep top up of 30 minutes to 90 minutes. The reason we don't go beyond 90 minutes with a sleep top up is that's when they look at REM sleep and it's very hard to come out of that and wake up. So if a strength athlete has problems sleeping, we would look at a 30 to 90 minute sleep top up during the day, but no, no longer than 90 minutes for a sleep top up.